Okay, let's review where we are now. So suppose that C is a parameterized curve So we can write it as um, R of T, where T goes from A to B. And if F is a vector field, which is defined on some domain that contains C, so in particular is defined on C, Then we can integrate the vector field along the curve. So the integral over C of f dot dr is defined to be the integral from a to b of f of r of t dot r prime of t dt. And this depends only on the curve and not on the parameterization except that if you switch the direction of the parameterization, you switch the sign. So this does not depend on the parameterization if you go in the same direction. Well, if you switch the direction, then you have the integral over minus c of f dot dr. So minus c means c going in the opposite direction. That's equal to minus the integral over c of f dot dr. Okay, and also recall that f is conservative. if f is the gradient of some function. So f is the gradient of little f for some function f. And I forgot to say this before, the reason why it's called conservative, it's not about politics, it has to do with conservation of energy for reasons which we'll see shortly. Okay, so I now want to explain the fundamental theorem of line integrals which is going to bring together all these notions on this page. So here's what the fundamental theorem of line integral says. So the fundamental theorem of line integrals So it's that if f is conservative, so in particular, if f is the gradient of a function little f, and if c is a curve, a parameterized curve, from a point capital A to a point capital B, then the integral over c of f dot dr is equal to little f of b minus little f of a. Okay, so here, capital A and capital B to note the points in R2 or R3 where the curve begins and ends. So capital A is equal to R of lowercase a and capital B is R of lowercase b. So lowercase a and lowercase b are the endpoints of the interval on which our parameterization is defined. Okay, so let's let's think about what this theorem is saying. So it's saying that if I want to integrate the vector field f along the curve, I just have to evaluate the function lowercase f at the two endpoints and subtract. So this should look familiar. It's very similar to the fundamental theorem of calculus. So the fundamental theorem of calculus it says that the integral from a to b, let's say of dg 
dx dx equals g of b minus g of a. Okay, so this says that if you want to integrate the derivative of a function on an interval, you just evaluate the function at the two endpoints and subtract. And here, we are integrating the gradient of a function along a curve, and to evaluate that, we evaluate the function at the two endpoints and subtract. So here, instead of having the derivative with respect to x, we have the gradient. But otherwise, it's quite analogous. Okay, um, so this has some consequences. So a corollary is that if f is conservative, then the integral over c of f dot dr depends only on the endpoints of the curve and not on the curve itself. Okay, so in the previous lecture segment, we saw an example where we integrated the same vector field along two different curves with the same endpoints, and we got two different answers. So that vector field is not conservative. If you have a conservative vector field, then you'll get the same answer regardless of which curve you choose as long as you use the same endpoints. So let's see an example of how that works. So let's calculate the integral over c of f dot dr where the vector field f in three dimensions is 2xyz plus e to the x plus c comma x squared z comma x squared y plus e to the x plus c and uh, C is a curve from the point 1, 2, 0 to the point 1, 0, 5. Okay? Now, in general, that might not be enough information to evaluate the integral because, um, in general, the integral of a vector field along a curve depends on the curve. However, if the vector field is conservative, then it doesn't. So the solution, that the only way that this problem can be solvable is if f is conservative. So f is the gradient of a function, where what's the function? Well, so you could do the mechanical procedure that I explained before, where you integrate out the variables one after another to find what f is, or we could take a guess and see if it works. So if we look at the first component of our vector field, that's supposed to be the partial derivative with respect to x of the function lowercase f. So what's a function whose derivative with respect to x is this? Well, we could try x squared yz plus e to the x plus c. Now is this going to work? Well, what if we take the derivative with respect to y? Then I get x squared z and that's what I'm supposed to get, so that's good. Then what if I take the derivative with respect to z, well, then I get x squared y plus e to the x plus z, and that also works. So we took a lucky guess and checked it, and it worked. Okay, and so, by the fundamental theorem of line integrals, the integral over c of f dot dr is little f evaluated at the final point of a curve, the curve, minus little f evaluated at the initial point of the curve. Um, so I just have to plug in x equals 1, y equals 0, and z equals 5 to x, to, to f, okay? So for 1, 0, 5, I get um, 0, 
plus e to the sixth minus, and then if x equals one, y equals two, and z equals zero, I have zero plus e to the one plus zero. So you get e to the sixth minus e. Uh, now you could alternatively pick a curve going between these two points and evaluate the integral, although you, that wouldn't prove that the answer is not going to depend on the curve. Um, I mean, if you happen to know that the vector field is conservative, then you could pick any curve you like and evaluate the integral along that curve. Or if you know what the potential is, you can just do it this way using the fundamental theorem of line integrals.